Okay, let's do a little bit more practice problems so that, you know, we are perfectly ready to solve real problems, okay? So here's a simple problem. Imagine you have a wedge or some sort of an incline which is uh, clamped to this particular horizontal floor. That means this incline can't move. And imagine the surface of the incline is pretty much frictionless. So I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna release this mass and I'm just gonna release it. And it's gonna accelerate down. And I want to now write, now I want to calculate what's the acceleration of that particular mass. It's a pretty straightforward problem, but let's apply F equals MA to figure it out. I also want to know what the normal force is. So, so do it. these are the two questions. I want to know what the acceleration are acceleration is and I want to calculate the normal force so what will we do we'll draw a free body diagram for that particular mass so let me draw it over here here is the object and this angle is theta all right let's write down what the what are the forces we have one force which is acting downwards and that force is mg that is the gravitational force that's always mg downwards we have the normal force which is perpendicular to the surface so the normal force is going to be this way and uh, there aren't any other forces right there is no friction so these are the only two forces which means we have to now use these two forces to figure out the acceleration okay now the first question is what direction do you think the acceleration is going to be you have to make a guess i'm pretty sure that's a very easy guess over here the whole thing is going to accelerate this way you could guess that the acceleration is this way, that's, that's perfectly fine, but since we know it's such a simple problem, let's just guess that the acceleration is going to be in this direction. Notice that the acceleration, the normal force and mg are all in two dimensions. It's a, it's a two dimensional problem, so what we're going to do is we're going to resolve. When we resolve, we choose two perpendicular axes and we have the choice to choose how the perpendicular axis may be oriented. Now, you could usually choose horizontal and vertical this way, like what I did in the last problem. But guess what? If you do it this way, then you will see that the acceleration also has to be resolved. Usually, what I like to do is choose X and Y in such a direction such that acceleration doesn't have to be resolved. Now, that's not a necessity, but I like to do it that way. So, it's, it's just a personal preference. So, what I like to do is I'm going to take this direction as X this direction is y so this is x and this is y so I'm gonna call this as my horizontal and my vertical so we're gonna we're gonna take all my forces and resolve them along the horizontal and vertical notice that normal is already along the y direction the only force that I have to resolve now is mg so let's quickly do that so let's put our axes over here reference marks notice that this angle is theta this angle it turns out to be 90 minus theta. Think of this as a right angle triangle. Theta, 90, 90 minus theta, which means this angle has to be theta. If you did not get it, pause for a while, draw this, do the geometry, you will get it. You should be able to do this, okay? All right, now we will resolve mg. mg has two components. One component will be this way. The other component will be this way. This is the adjacent component, so it's mg cos theta. So this is mg cos theta, and this is mg sine theta. Okay, now we can use Newton's second law in the x and y direction. Let's do that. Let's do Newton's second law in the x direction. That should be equal to mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Here is my x. I hope this is not too crowded for you. There's only one force in the x direction, which is mg sine theta along the positive. So there's only one force, let's write that down. mg sine theta. That should be equal to mass times the acceleration along the x direction. So that's it. There's the acceleration. That's g sine theta. Ta-da! We got it. It was a straightforward problem, but I anyways wanted to tackle it. Alright, now let's go into the vertical. In the vertical we can again say Net force in the vertical must be equal to mass times acceleration in the vertical. But there is no acceleration in the vertical because in this problem we pretty much know it's going to just slide down this way. There's not going to be any acceleration. And remember, normal force will always try to counter mg cos theta. Will always try. Normal force is like a self-adjustable force. It'll adjust itself according to how much uh, the force 
this mass is going to put on the surface. Okay, so it's always going to try and counter it. All right, so the two forces we have now is normal, which is positive along the y direction, and you have an mg cos theta, which is negative along the y direction. You see, it's downwards, so minus mg cos theta. It's going to be mass times acceleration, which is zero. I'm sorry, this is zero. So the right hand side is zero. So n equals mg cos theta. Ta da! Done. Okay, we'll solve one more. It will be a little bit more, little bit more difficult than this. Okay, are you ready for this? Let's see.